In this lecture, we'll talk about product value and pricing. Let's move on to the next part of product mix, which is the how you uh, how you uh, determine the price and look at pricing strategies that companies might have as they put their product products into the marketplace. Previously, we defined price as the value placed on an object that is exchanged between a buyer and a seller. The buyer's interest in price stems from expectations about the usefulness of the product or the satisfaction they might derive from owning it. Because buyers have limited resources, they must allocate those resources to obtain products that, that they most desire. They must decide whether the benefits gained in the exchange are worth the buying power sacrificed. Almost anything of value can be assessed by a price. Many factors may influence the evaluation of value, including time constraints, time, excuse me, time constraints, price levels, perceived quality, and motivations to use available information about the pricing. The figure on the slide illustrates a method for calculating the value of the price. You can see that you identify target customers, you identify their best alternatives they have, you determine how, determine how your product is different, and then you calculate based upon this, this analysis how much value you think the customer is getting from your product versus other products in the marketplace and then assign a price to it. Let's talk more about this pricing, as, this pricing analysis. Price, as we've been describing, is a key element of the marketing mix, of course. It determines how much value is brought into the company with the exchange of the product with customers. It also relates directly to the generation of all the revenue and profits for the firm. In large part, the ability to set the right price depends upon the supply and demand for a product. For most products, the quantity demanded goes up as the price goes down. And as the price goes up, the quantity demanded goes down. The price is probably the most flexible variable in the marketing mix. Although it may take years to develop a product, establish the channels of distribution, and design and implement a promotion strategy, a product's price may be set and changed within a few minutes. Pricing objectives specify the role of price in an organization's marketing mix and strategy. They usually are influenced not only by marketing mix decisions, but also by finance, by accounting, by production factors. Maximizing profits and sales, boosting market share, maintaining the status quo, and the survi and survival of the firm overall by bringing in enough resources are four common pricing objectives. An important question is how does one set the price for a brand new product? Not yet in the market, you don't really know the demand. Setting the price for a new product is critical. It's the right the right price will lead to adequate product profitability or great productivity pro profitability while the wrong pro price may ultimately kill the product. In general, there are two basic strategies to set at the base price for a new, pro new product. Price skimming is charging the highest possible price that buyers who want the product will pay. Price skimming is used for luxury items and other items that you feel that there is a there's relatively low price sensitivity for people who want to buy your product. Conversely, a penetration price is a low price designed to help a product enter the market and gain market share. This would allow growth of market share to occur relatively rapidly because the price is perceived to be low and therefore a good value and the value is received by the consumer in the exchange relationship. Penetration is, is uh, less flexible than price skimming, however, because it's more difficult to raise a price, a penetration price, than it is to lower a skimming price. Penetration pricing is used most often when marketers suspect that competitors will enter the market shortly after the product is introduced. You expect to have pricing competitions, so you go in lower to try and get as, mar as much market share as quickly as possible. There are other strategies to pricing as well. Psychological pricing encouraging, encourages purchases based upon an emotional rather than a, reational, a rational response to the price. For example, the assumption behind even odd pricing is that people will buy more of a product for $9.99 than for $10.
because it seems to be a bargain at an odd price. The assumption behind symbolic or prestige pricing is that high prices connote high quality. Thus, the prices of certain fragrances and cosmetics are set artificially high to give the impression of superior quality. Reference pricing is a type of psychological pricing in which a low priced item is compared to a more expensive brand in the hopes that the consumer will use the higher price as a comparison price. The main idea is to make the item appear less expensive compared with other alternatives, even though the price might still be high. Temporary price reductions or discounts are often employed to boost sales in this way. Although there are many types, of, uh, types, quantities, seasonal, and promotional discounts are among the most widely used. Quantity discounts reflect the economies of purchasing in large volumes. Seasonal, seasonal discounts to buyers who purchase goods or services out of season helps even out production capacity so that there are not big swings in inventories depending upon the season. Promotional discounts attempt to improve sales by advertising price reductions on selected products to increase pro customer interest in those products, even though perhaps the season is, is changing for, that, for the sale of that particular product or some other, for some other reason. Maintain visibility in the consumer's eye of the availability and desirability of that product. In the next lecture, we'll talk about distribution or place the other the third p of the four p's place but distribution really where do you put the product